All right, so good evening once again, guys. Today we want to look at how to solve quadratic equations. Now, we previously looked at how to solve simultaneous equations. Now, um, for quadratic equations, we would have been familiarized with how to factorize. So um, we are going to be using factorization technique as one method in solving. So your, 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 your um, memory of how to factorize will, will, will be pulled on. All right. So um, let us just remind ourselves what is a quadratic what is a quadratic expression, and then we look at what a quadratic equation is. So anybody can remind me of what a quadratic expression is? Anybody knows? Anybody remembers? <laughs> Guys, anybody remember what a quadratic expression is, what form it takes? All right, whenever you think about quadratic, you should start off with some variable square. And then now, so it is the general form is ax square plus bx plus c. That's a general form for a, um, a quadratic expression. Now, um, let us look what's the definition here. All right, so, and an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where the highest power to which x is raised is to the second power is called a quadratic equation. Now, the important thing that really makes, an, makes a quadratic is really the power of the x. So the highest power in every quadratic will be to the to the power two. You won't have a power greater than two for a quadratic, a quadratic equation. We use a different color. So the power two is the highest power within any quadratic. All right, so the, the variable, the highest power of the variable, and in this case, the variable would be x. Now, just to know that they can use other letters instead of X to be the variable. Actually, they can use any letters, but the key thing is that one of them going to have a square power and one of them going to be raised to the power one. But we generally don't write X to the power one. We know that if there's no power above the X, there's an invisible one there. So that's automatically X to the power one. Now, you might not see an X beside C, but if you put X to the power zero, then you will realize that X to the power zero is equal to one. Anything that you raise to the power zero is equal to one. So there's actually a, a um, x to the power zero beside the c, but because it's equal to one, normally they don't bother to put that. So if you look at the general form, the power of x would go from zero, one, two, and that's a, the form of a quadratic. All right, now, if there is only one x in it and you have a square, you still have a quadratic. All right, so we're going to look at some general forms. Any questions so far, guys? All right, so these are the general form that quadratic will appear in, right? So we know the one that we have ax squared plus bx plus c, but quadratic can also have ax squared plus c. In this case, you notice that the, B, the bx that would be in the middle would not be there because b would be equal to zero. So ax squared 
plus C would be in the form of example, two X squared plus a number. This is also a quadratic, right? Now, sometimes you will have the AX squared with the BX, but you don't have a C, right? So in this form, you still have a quadratic. So what really stand out in the quadratics would be the X squared term. So once there's an X squared there, you know you have a quadratic. The highest power of the X is X squared. So you should look for that X squared in order to determine whether or not you have a quadratic. You should not have a power higher than two, and you should not, all right, so you should not have a power higher than two, and you don't always have it in the form of AX squared, AX squared plus BX plus C. It can be in AX squared plus C, or it can be in AX squared plus BX. So you have to be a little, become a little familiar with the forms that these quadratic can be in. Because the, the, the various forms, so we have three forms that you will see it in. The, the three forms will, will take a, a slightly different approach when you are solving them, all right? Any question, guys? Are you following so far? Raise your hand and see if you are with me or if you're on the same page with me. All right. Okay. All right, so with that said, so just to remind you, the general form has AX squared plus BX plus C. But if, you, if, if this becomes zero, you only have AX squared plus C. If C becomes zero, you only have AX squared plus BX. So those are the three forms that you can have it in. All right, so the different methods in solving a quadratic. Now, just to remind you what it means by to solve an equation. When you're solving an equation, it means that there is some unknown that you're trying to find a value for. Now, for quadratic equation, the unknown would be the x. And so you're going to have an x squared, and you're going to have an x to the power of one in some cases. So because you have an x squared, oftentimes a quadratic will have two values for x, all right? And the various method of how we can solve them would be as follows. All right, so we have the first method by making the unknown the subject. Now, this would be the method that we generally use for any equation. When we are solving for any equation, we simply put everything else on the other side and keep the unknown by itself on one side. And then we calculate what is on the other side to get the value for x. So making the unknown the subject is one way that we can solve quadratics, so depending on the type of quadratic that we're working with, which we'll see in a while. Excuse me, guys. All right, guys, sorry about that. So um, the next method would be by factors. And when we say by factors, it means that this method involves factorizing. Give me a second, guys.
All right, guys, sorry about that. So, um, so the second method is by factor. So it means that we have to factorize when we are solving by a factor. Now there's a third method known as completing the square. Now it is not so much the case that um, you will get a complete in the square in, 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 in the more recent exams. Once upon a time, it used to be more popular, but it's not so popular now. So I'm not going to spend much time with the complete in the square for, for, for the sake that you may not require to do much of that, all right? Now, the next method is by the formula that derived from completing the square. So there's a formula, a quadratic formula, that is simply plugging some values in it, and then you use a calculator to do your calculations. All right, guys? But we're going to start off first <clears throat> by looking at one and two. <clears throat> now, last but not least, by graph. Now, we would have looked at graph before. You have to see with me, guys. My sinus is draining and it's giving me a warm time. So I'm just trying to uh, bear it through. All right, so you would have been familiar by so, um, solving a graph. <clears throat> this is when you plot the quadratic on the graph. And you look at where it cuts the x-axis. So wherever it cuts the x-axis, you read the values of x from the x-axis, and that's what we solve it by graph. So um, we're going to be more concerned about methods one, two, and four. So I'm not going to focus too much on three. And by graph, we would have done that already when we were doing graph, all right? All right, so the first method is making the unknown the subject. And we say that this is the usual way that we solve any equations. We generally keep the unknown on one side. <clears throat> Joe is feeling irritated again. All right, so you would be a little familiar with how to do that. Now, <clears throat> this is a type of quadratic that we generally um, solve by making the unknown sub. Now, whenever there is, if you, if you recall the forms that we were looking at just now, in this one, you wouldn't have the bx. You would only have the x squared plus c, <clears throat> where c is just a number at the end. Now, once you have this one, what you generally do is make the x squared the subject by bringing the number on the other um, on the other side of the equation. So we bring the negative sixteen on the other side. 
And so we will get x squared equal to 16. And then now to find x, you would find the square root of 16. But <clears throat> when we are solving for a square root, we generally put a plus and a minus sign in front of square root because there are actually two numbers that we can square to get 16. <clears throat> we can square negative um, four and positive four. And so the answer here is going to be x is either equal to positive four or x is equal to negative four. <clears throat> Give me a second again, guys. I need to clear my throat. All right, so everybody follows so far, right? <clears throat> Any question about this? Anybody? All right, so what you're, what you're to look out for in this one, <clears throat> you only have x squared by itself plus a number, right? I want to have it in this way then you can do that, all right? So this is example one, let us see another example. <clears throat> all right, so we know that the answer is either plus four or minus four. All right, so here's another one, <clears throat> which is similar to what we would have done. So you only have one x squared in this. So we solve it just in a similar way as we did the one before. So I bring across the 12. So here we bring the, the 12 to the right hand side. <clears throat> and then we divide both sides by two to get rid of the two. So we have x squared equal to six. So next we find the square root of six, but we always put a plus or minus in front of the square root side. <clears throat> For the same reason as before, because you have a plus or a minus value that you can square to get six. <clears throat> so if you use your calculator, the, the, the plus or minus value that you can square to get six would be 2.45. All right, guys. Now, here we have another one here. I want you to try this one on your own. And then now tell me what the answer you get. All right, All right guys, I'm just going to give you about two minutes to try this. So you may go, you may go ahead.
finish, Ms. Wesam? Yes, sir. All right, anybody else finish? All right, I'm giving at least, all right, everybody is finished. All right, what's the answer that you get here? Could be positive or minus three, sir. All right, so there's a reason why I want to bring this one to your attention. So when we when we solve, we bring the positive to the right side. So x squared equals negative eighteen. All right, so if we divide both negative 18, I divide both sides by two. So this side cancel, we get x squared equal to negative nine. So x would be plus or minus the square root of negative nine. But there's a problem here. Can anybody tell me what the problem is? Nobody have any idea what the problem is? Think about it, guys. Which number can you square to give you negative nine? Three, sir. But if you square three, you don't get negative nine, you get positive nine. Right, sir. So it, it would take both a positive and a negative three? No, but that would not be a square. So a square is when you raise the power number to the power two. So if you square negative three, or you square positive three, in either case, you're going to get a positive nine. Mm -hmm. Why say that? Yes, sir. So you're going to get a positive nine for either case. If where negative three are positive three. So it means that there is no real root for a negative number. Now in math, we say that negative number has an imaginary root. And I'll explain why, why that is so. Give me a second, guys. All right, so why, why is that so? Because for real numbers, real numbers have integers that are negative and positive. So we have to come up with a number or a, or a, or a set of number <clears throat> where we can find the, negative, the square root of negative numbers. And so that, that set of number that we have to develop so that we can find the square root of negative number is what we refer to as complex numbers. But for your purpose, you're, you won't be studying complex numbers 
at this level, but if you should pursue math any further than CSEC, you should come across complex numbers. All right, so <clears throat> if you decide to do like additional math or K math units one and two, you will come across complex numbers. And in that, in, in that number, we will be able to find the square root of negative number, but we won't be able to do that for real numbers. Is that clear, guys? So whenever you get a scenario where you are to find the square root of a negative number, your answer going to be imaginary root. So this has an imaginary root, all right? So the answer to this is that it, ha it has, so x, the root for x is imaginary. So, so root for x, so you just state that. So you just state that the answer has an imaginary root. So x has an imaginary root. Is that clear, guys? So once you find yourself having to find the square root of a negative number, this is what you write as your answer. Is that clear? Guys, raise your hand if, if, if what Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so with that said, if you are given this scenario, you should be able to handle it, all right? So it is not possible to give meaning to the root of a negative numbers for negative numbers. So we say that the root of a negative number is imaginary. Therefore, root of negative nine is said to be, said to have an imaginary root, all right? So that's, that's how you treat with this. All right, so next, we're going to look at sol solution <clears throat> or solving by factors. Now, remember we say that to solve by factors, it will require us to factor, factorize our expression. No, but remember what we are solving we are solving quadratic. So it means that whatever quadratic expression we have, our quadratic equation, we should look to see whether we can factorize them. All right, now, but before we jump into the factorization of it, there's something that we need to consider here. Now, if we have two numbers, one is A and one is B, and you multiply them to get zero. What can you conclude about the values of A and B? One of them is zero, sir. One of them must be zero. Because, so is either one is zero or the other is zero, or even both. But for the purpose of um, solving by factor, we'll just consider that one or the other is zero. So if the product of two factor is zero, either one or the other or both factors are zero. Therefore, if A times B equal to zero, either A equal to zero or B equal to zero. So when we are solving factors, and, and we are equating to zero, this is a statement that we'll have to make, all right? For example, now this is a quadratic equation. And most time when we are solving quadratic equation, the equations are 
often equated to zero. And if they are not equated to zero, then in order to factorize, you are required to get everything on one side and leave zero on one side. So you, you should equate your quadratic to zero before you factorize, all right? So here now, if you, if you recall the, the factorization technique that you would have learned, then you would have had like the AC method. Um, you would have the, the method where you find two factors of the last term and you add them you get the middle term. That is when the coefficient of x squared is one. And if the coefficient of x squared is a number greater 